Howdy, Possum Patty here, and today I'm journaling in my altered composition notebook. Have you ever put a little personal map into your journal? Come on along and see what I made. Okay, my journal's getting pretty chunky. We'll call this the Fatty Patty. And I hope it doesn't fall apart before I finish it up. Now I've been working on some Easter pages. These pages were a lot of fun. And now I'm doing something a little bit different. I made a map of the little hike that we went on after Easter dinner. And this is very simple and these are very easy to do. I wasn't thinking about it the day that we went on the hike. So I had to do all this from memory. I should have taken notes when we were hiking. But we started at home and we went down the dirt road past the neighbors over the creek and then we took a left hand turn and the dirt road goes straight to some private property. On this stretch of the road beside the creek we saw some dandelions. As we hiked down this way, we came to a big open clearing and there were lots of discoveries to be made in this big open clearing. One thing we noticed were these tall plants and they were like four feet tall and they had these little spiky heads at the top of them, the little seed heads. I didn't know what they were at the time, but I looked them up after we got back and this is my Wild Flowers and Winter Weeds by Lorne Brown. And she wrote the book and drew all the pictures. I used to work with her at Yale University in the biology department. So I looked it up and I found out that these are called bush clovers. And this is what the whole plant looks like. And I drew a little picture here. Seed heads, bush clover. And I had this little sample I brought back. And because seed heads tend to fall apart a little bit if you try to keep them in your book, I did paint some glitter Mod Podge on them. And then I put them in this little acetate envelope with a backing on it. Some other things that were in the clearing was just one little like bowl in the dirt, like a bowl shaped depression, not really big. And in it were some feathers and I picked up one of the feathers and I put it in my journal here. And this is a turkey feather. Now it's illegal to take raptor feathers like eagles and hawks. And it's also illegal to take migratory songbird feathers. But you can get a permit for those, for the migratory songbird feathers. Um, if you're collecting for a nature center or a museum, I had one of those in Pennsylvania. But this is from a turkey, so this is a game bird. So this is a different classification. You can collect game bird feathers. Any bird that is shot or eaten, like turkeys, ducks, pheasants, quail, things like that, um, you can collect their feathers. It's legal to do that. So that was the little depression of dirt where the turkeys roll around in the dirt and take their little dust bath. Sometimes you'll see the chickens doing that. And right near there was some piles of scat. Now scat is what the naturalists call wildlife poo. And I actually have this scarf that says mammal scat of North America. And you wear this scarf when you go out hiking and the cat's been sitting on it, so it's full of cat hair. Everything in my house is full of cat hair. And when you come across some poo, you can take your scarf off and see what left the scat. Now the scat, I'm gonna show you a couple pictures here, but it looked like this coyote scat right here. But there was also some other scat there that did not look like this at all. It was very segmented 
and it was white. And later on, I looked it up and I found out that it's really hard to tell the coyote scat from the bobcat scat, except for you may see the coyote scat as more of like a single piece like this and the bobcat scat with segments. Now it was white because it's old scat, an old scat that's left uh, outside like all winter under the snow, the colors leach out of it. But this happens to both the coyote and the bobcat. But I still think there were two different animals leaving their mark there, one being a coyote and one being a bobcat. Now I know there's bobcats in the neighborhood because I've taken a picture of one in my driveway. In this area, there was a whole patch of this little draba flower. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny white flower, and the plant is like smaller than my fingernail, but it gets a little stem and little tiny white flowers, and they were blowing in the breeze. So pretty. They're so tiny, but they were so pretty. And then over on the other side of the clearing, there was a big pile with some white things sticking out. And we weren't sure what that was, so we walked over to check it out. And what the white things were, were bones. Now I snapped one of these in half, and it's hollow on the inside. So I figured they're like chicken bones or turkey bones. And so, looking at the scene, we do a little nature scene investigation. This big pile of looked like compost. Uh, it was very um, decomposed with these little bones sticking out of it. That this was some um, compost from a chicken farm or a turkey farm that somebody had dumped in the field and just kept piling it up and piling it up. And as the organic matter decomposed and went down, the little bones started sticking up and turning white in the sun and in the weather. But I know that uh, chicken farmers, when you know they compost all the uh, chicken manure, and if a chicken dies, they take it and they throw that on the compost pile too. So that's probably why the compost pile had these little chicken bones in it. Now I didn't put a chicken bone in in my book, I guess I could have done that too, right? Just a small one. Maybe on another page. So there was a lot of discoveries here in the clearing. We walked a little further down, and the, the creek came across the trail again, and I walked along the creek, and we went a little further. And there's a river down here, and we didn't quite get to the river. We kind of turned around at that point and came back. So I did this on this dark green cardstock. I used a uniball white pen to draw on there. I have a couple things written with a black glaze pen. That's a shiny black here. And this blue over here is a... Sakura Souffle pen. I added some stickers that I got from Michael's the other day. And on this one, I split the sticker. So it was like half on the page and half on the little flip up here. And I don't know why I did that, but I just did. So this page is all ready to put into the book. And I'm going to glue that down. And then I'll be back. Okay, I got my little map for my Easter hike all glued down. Still wet. And on this, I think, will be my last Easter page is a card that my sister sent me from her and my mom. And this is just some scrapbook paper 
and it has this like little edge that you're supposed to tear off to make it a 12 by 12 but I left that little edge on because this piece of scrap paper will fit on the page with that little bit of edge and I added some of this rickrack because I got a whole bag of this at the flea market last week and I really like this purple against this yellow green that really stands out so I'm going to glue this down and then I'm going to make something to put in the pocket. See, I just sewed everything on. And then I'm going to call this page done. I added a little pink bunny to this page. Kind of goes over to this pink bunny over there. Just kind of draw the two pages together. And also you might notice that this green is the same green that's in the background of this page. So sometimes I do separate spreads, and sometimes these are kind of separate, but yet they have two um, elements linking them together. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention on my map was the spring azure butterfly. It was my first butterfly of the season. We saw that on Easter Day. And if you don't know what a spring azure is, of course azure is blue. The little tiny blue butterfly is so pretty. And I tried to get a picture of it, but it was flitting around so fast across the path that you can just barely see it as it goes by. So I wanted to show you a picture of that, Spring Azure. And I finished my little journaling card. Now the card I made out of the inside of the Easter card, so I cut it. I left a signature from my mom and my sister. I added some trim to match the page. So this little piece of green from the rest of the page and some of this purple rickrack. So the card kind of matches the page there. On the back, I put some of this flowered paper and the reason I chose this flower paper because the scrap was sitting on my desk. And on Easter, I played triominoes with my son and daughter-in-law. I never played triominoes before. It's like dominoes, but they're triangle-shaped. And then we did a family bingo Zoom later in the day. And my sister had also sent some Easter scratch-offs to win prizes. And I won because I got the bunny. So I glued this all on the back. And I just journaled about it on this side what we play, the games that we played for Easter. So this is my little journaling card they made to match the page. And I'm just gonna stick that right in there. And that look cute there with the little matching yellow, green, and purple rickrack. I got so much stuff on the table now. No room here I need to clean off. Okay, well thanks for coming along on my two really fun Easter pages. And I just want to wish everybody happy junk journaling or happy daily journaling. Bye bye now.